Hi, my name is Victor Nagy, and I am the senior product manager of the Configure Group. And my group is responsible for how to DevOps to the product category. And this ask me anything. This is kind of a half reverse, half direct ask me anything because I'm super interested in your insights. So feel free to ask me any questions. I will do my best to answer them. But at the same time, I will have a set of questions at the end of this presentation. As a result, this presentation has a few aims. One is to set a common ground. Out to DevOps is part of GitLab since 11.0. That's a long time. Many of us has opinions around it. Many of us experiences with it. And to have a fruitful discussion, I would like us to set a common ground. I'm super thankful for everything that was done without DevOps before me, because I think it's, it showed that there's an amazing, huge market for what Auto DevOps is meant to serve. Nevertheless, we know that it might not be the best fit for that market today, and that's what we want to improve. So thanks for everyone who ever worked on it, who improved the templates and the integrations, because I think it's an amazing product vision that Auto DevOps has to support uh, the DevOps transitions. But anyway, let's get started. So first, what's the aim of Auto DevOps? Then relationships to other similar looking initiatives, where does it fit within GitLab today? And then comes the discussion, what do we want to build with a set of questions that I'd love to hear your answers to. So the aim, there are various levels how we can define it. Let's start with the business goal because that might be something that everybody is familiar with. When I joined the company in 2019, it was a very hot topic that we should increase stages per user. If we manage to increase, include the stages a given user uses, it's much more likely that that user will be upgraded to a higher tier. Since then, we know that this is even more true for stages per organization. So the more stages a specific organization uses, the more likely it is that they will upgrade. This is the business perspective of Auto DevOps, and this is very, very important because that drives, that's one of the driving motivations behind it. Nevertheless, Auto DevOps is a product. As such, it has to serve a user's need. And I would like us to focus on the user need throughout the Ask Me Anything. I wrote up here a job statement for Auto DevOps. This is its current job statement. And actually, I expect it to stay as, as is. So we can start with this. Once I have a stable development and operations organization, I want to follow DevOps best practices in order to shorten the feedback loop and enable continuous learning. If you are familiar with what DevOps is, DevOps is about shortening the feedback loop and about continuous learning. And that's what Auto DevOps should enable. DevOps is a culture change. Auto DevOps is a technical solution to support that cultural change, make it simpler, make it less costly and easier to digest for the company. As many of us are not familiar to speak in terms of job statements, I try to form the same job statement in terms of a user story, which sounds as the following. As a platform engineer CTO, I want all the engineers in the company to follow DevOps best practices without the burden of learning any tooling in order to shorten feedback loops from production and enable learning. Here by enable learning, I mean enable learning from production. So it's not the learning of the tool, but learning in the product area. And <clears throat> I'm going to uh, unpack this job and the user story. Uh, this is the link uh, on the slide. <clears throat> First of all, the persona in the user story is platform engineer slash CTO. CTO is not really persona, but never mind. I'm not speaking about the type of persona here because in reality, it's, it's not a persona, it's a role. We have software engineers as a persona and we have application operators as a persona. I prefer to speak about this because it's much clearer distinction whom we speak about. And the idea here is that the platform engineer sets up, and the platform engineer could be GitLab actually, sets up the software team for success for success in terms of DevOps. And the CTO comes to this in the sense that they are the sponsor of this whole DevOps transition usually. So the CTO is only relevant because he sponsored this transition, he pays the platform engineer to do this job, and it should be easy for the platform engineer to do the setup. 
DevOps best practices, including a bit of GitLab flavor. DevOps is not a solution, it's a culture. That's very important. We have to understand that and we have to take with that. And GitLab, what we can do, we can support that culture change. We can enable that culture change. We can decrease the cost of that change. We can make it easier to adopt the best practices that come with that culture change. A few things that are related to DevOps here is that there's an increased team ownership. The team owns the processes from code to production. And it even owns the production deployments usually. There is very strong argument around version controlling, including infrastructure and workflows. These are owned by the team as well. Security is part of that process. There are many of our customers who don't want security to be, to be part of the team's ownership. But if you think about out DevOps, we have to think with security in mind as well. Review apps, now we are getting more to GitLab uh, flavor. Review apps enable really is feature acceptance and on the dozens of interviews I run, many people are asking for review apps if for whatever reason it's not accept accessible for them. Various advanced, various advanced deployment strategies are a requirement. For the same reason, the team wants to own this and it's their job to make the deployments to happen. Deployments nevertheless are automated. Everything is automated actually. The deployment target should be undefined from a framework level. It should be able, we can, one should be able to use Kubernetes as a deployment target or uh, one of the app stores or ECS. It's up to the user to decide. And we can provide some defaults, but it shouldn't be our decision. So there's a bit more about what, what DevOps is and you can read that, but the basic idea that we want to serve is these jobs to be done. Once I have a stable development and operations organization, I want to follow DevOps best practices in order to shorten the feedback loop and enable continuous learning. This is the job statement that we want to fulfill. This is the user problem that we want to solve. Okay, now, of course, many areas of GitLab work, especially on stages per user, stages per organization uh, initiatives. So we have to position out to DevOps very well in this area. I have an issue here open from the growth team that describes very well how they think about it. And auto DevOps especially comes into play when we think about continuous onboarding. You might say, come on, this, that, that just means auto DevOps. We should enable the user to use other stages as well, and then they get it. Nope. I think auto DevOps is very different from that <clears throat> because auto DevOps is automatic. So it's the user just gets it without any learning, without any setup. That setup might be done by the platform engineer, but not by the software developer itself when we start to speak about personas. Or it might be done by GitLab, but again, not by the software engineer. It should be automatic for the software engineer as much as possible. And then the growth themes topic still is still valid that the platform engineer has to learn about this tool set. Then the other similar initiative is pipeline authoring, because you could author the auto DevOps pipelines today on your own. And many of our users who are not satisfied with auto DevOps offerings, what they do, they write their own templates and they tell them the user interviews that they are actually auto DevOps users, just they have their own custom auto DevOps templates. So this is open. So pipeline authoring is again uh, a related area, but it's very different. It's much minor. It's not about making it automatic. And we basically just have to integrate well that if somebody is an auto DevOps user, it should be clear to them. And probably the pipeline monitoring can help a lot the auto DevOps experience and support our users to use these DevOps best practices as well. Then there's the five minute production app. I don't want to speak much about it because they, they have actually a separate section with the uh, relationship to auto DevOps. Um, <clears throat> I think these are very, very similar topics, except that we are not, we don't look from a solutions point of view, but we approach it from a problem point of view because that's what product managers do. We look at the user problem, we understand the user problem and we give a solution for that. And that can give a long lasting uh, successful product. And finally, I want to mention our amazing solution architect who, provided me a ton of 
useful feedback um, in YouTube videos, some in live chat, some in issue comments, in all kinds of various ways about how, what actually AutoDevOps today is, which is a set of best practice templates that users can learn from. And it gives a hint that I might be able to use GitLab for all these things. So this is where we start from. This is where we are right now. And this is where AutoDevOps fits to fulfill the job that it's meant to fulfill. And then let's get started with discussion. When I wrote up that job statement, I had to answer all these questions and you can see them reflected in the job statement. At the same time, I have even more concrete answers on how I envision out levels. But before I share that vision with you, I'm super happy that I know some of my engineers have competing visions as well. And I would like to hear your ideas around this. How do you envision auto DevOps? How do you imagine GitLab to support users' DevOps requirements in five years, for example? And together with this comes the idea of who is the target audience? Who is the Swansboro? Who will buy? Who will pay for this? Who will be the primary user and who will consume it? To give you an idea of these three different questions, if you think about the children and their parents, we have a hardworking mother who buys the food, a really family friendly father who makes an amazing lunch, and then we have the children who eat that. So this is for you to get started with this discussion. Please ask me any questions that you have. I will be, I'll do my best to answer them. And I'm super interested in your answers to any of these questions or others that come up in the discussion. Thank you very much.